All right, let's talk about the dimension of a vector space. To do this, we need to go back and uh, review what a basis is. Recall that a basis is a set of vectors um, that is linearly independent and spans uh, the subspace that uh, it's a basis for. So let's think about uh, R3. If you have more than three vectors in R3, then they must be linearly dependent. Right? If you put them in a matrix, put it in echelon form, then you would have free variables. Uh, if you have less than three vectors, then they don't span R3. Right? If you had only two, you wouldn't be able to have a pivot position in every column if you stuck them in a matrix. So, or wouldn't have a pivot position in every row, excuse me. Um, so they would not be, um, they would not span R3. So if you put those two together, um, you need at least three uh, to span. Uh, if you have more than three, they're linearly dependent. So that means that any basis for R3 has to have exactly three vectors. Right, our theorem says that if a vector space has a basis of n vectors, then every basis for that space must have exactly n vectors. Um, this number of vectors in a uh, basis for a vector space is called the dimension of that vector space. And we have a, uh, a special case where uh, uh, the vector space has only the zero element. Okay, we call that the zero vector space. And since there's no basis for that set, then we define its dimension to be zero. Okay, so to find the dimension of a vector space or subspace, then one approach is simply to find a basis for that space and count the number of vectors in that basis. Uh, the standard basis for Rn consists of the vectors E1 through En. So you might recall that uh, E sub i is the uh, vector in Rn that has a 1 in the ith position and zeros out everywhere else. Or you can think of E sub i as just the ith column of the identity matrix. Uh, so the standard basis for R3 is... Uh, uh, consists of these three vectors, which you'll recognize as the columns of the 3x3 three three identity matrix. So in general, the dimension of Rn is n. Now right, let's talk about polynomials. Um, P sub n, if you recall, is the set of polynomials of degree n or less. So for example, P sub 2 uh, consists of all polynomials um, that are quadratic or less, okay, all polynomials that look like a naught plus a1 times t plus a2 times t squared, where the uh, a values are just real numbers. The standard basis for p sub 2 is uh, this set, 1, t, and t squared. So any vector in p sub 2, any polynomial in p sub 2, can be written as a linear combination of these three uh, objects. So the dimension of P sub 2 is 3, and in general, the dimension of P sub n is n plus 1. Okay, what if we have a set like this, uh, defined uh, in terms of these parameters? Um, how do we find the dimension of uh, such a set? Uh, well, first let's find a basis, and to do that we can write uh, this generic vector in parametric vector form. And uh, so at this point, we know that these three vectors span our set S. And so, <coughs> excuse me, so we want to know are they linearly independent? And to check to see if they're linearly independent, we throw them in a matrix, do some row operations, uh, get that in uh, echelon or reduced echelon form. Uh, I, I got it in reduced echelon form. And uh, we can see here there's not a pivot position in every column. Therefore, uh, they're not linearly independent. We can see that there's a pivot position in the first two columns. So that means that the first two vectors are linearly independent. 
and notice that the negative one-third here means that the third column is minus one-third of the first column. And if you look back, uh, that is true. Minus one-third of three is negative one. Minus one-third of six is negative two, and so forth. All right. Uh, so that means that, that we can throw out that third column, and a basis for S would just consist of the first two vectors. And once we have a basis, then we need to only count the vectors in the basis to get the dimension. So there's two vectors in the basis. That means the dimension of S is 2. And uh, we don't say that S is R2, okay, because it's not, because these vectors are in R4. But what we do say is that S is a two-dimensional subspace of R4. Right, the basis theorem, this is an important theorem. It says that if you have a vector space with dimension p, where p is greater than or equal to 1, then the following conditions hold. Number one, any linearly independent set of p elements in V is a basis for V automatically. Don't have to check to see if it spans. Similarly, any set of p elements that spans V is automatically a basis. Okay, don't have to check to see if they're linearly independent. All right, so since we know the dimension of R3 is 3, if you have a set of three vectors in R3 that are linearly independent, then you know they're a basis. You don't have to check to see if they span, because they will. Similarly, if you have a set of three vectors that span R3, then you know they're a basis for R3. You don't have to check to see if they're linearly independent, because they will be. Okay. So we basically end up with uh, three pieces of the puzzle. Um, let's go back to that. Uh, three pieces of the puzzle. Knowing the dimension, having a set uh, of that many vectors that spans, or having a set of that many vectors that's linearly independent. If you have any uh, two of those three pieces, then you can conclude that you have a basis for the vector space you're, you're dealing with. Okay. Um, for given a matrix A, how do we find the dimension of the column space of A? Well, we go back to our method, find a basis, and count the number of vectors in the basis. Now let's think back, how do we find a basis for the column space of a matrix? We will put A in echelon form uh, so that we can find the pivot columns. We pull those columns from A, right? not from the echelon form, but from the original matrix A, and that's our basis. So here's uh, one, I think we looked at this one last time. Um, we take the matrix A, put it in echelon form. Uh, we can see that the first, third, and fifth columns are pivot columns, so we pull the first, third, and fifth columns from A, and that's a basis for the column space of A. And once you have a basis, then uh, getting the dimensions trivial, just three vectors in the basis, so the dimension of the column space of A is 3. In general, the dimension of the column space of a matrix is simply equal to the number of pivot columns in the matrix. All right, how about the null space? We have a matrix A, how do we find a basis, or how do we find the dimension of the null space of A? Well, once again, find a basis and then count the number of vectors. So let's uh, think back. How do we find a basis for the null space of a matrix? Uh, well, we have to solve AX equals 0 and write the solution in parametric vector form. And the vectors that we get there uh, both span the null space of A and they're linearly independent. We made that argument last time that when you write those in parametric vector form they will be linearly independent and therefore there'll be a basis for the null space of A. So if we start with this matrix A, we solve AX equals 0 um, and uh, write the solution in parametric vector form. Uh, we get these two vectors and uh, they are, oops, that should, yeah, x5 is 0, right? Yep, x5 is 0, so that, that's right. Um, so these two vectors are linearly independent. They span the null space, so they're a basis for the null space. 
Therefore, the dimension of the null space for this particular matrix is 2. Know that in general, the dimension of the null space is equal to the number of free variables in AX equals 0, right? Because that's, you have a vector here corresponding to each free variable. And where do free variables come from? They come from columns that don't have a pivot position. So the dimension of the null space is equal to the number of non-pivot columns in A. And recall, dimension of the column space is the number is equal to the number of pivot columns. Null space dimension is equal to the number of non-pivot columns. So if we add those two quantities together, the dimension of the null space plus the dimension of the column space, we get the number of pivot columns plus the number of non-pivot columns, which is equal to the number of columns. And we'll hit on that some more next time.